Hello, oh, hello, 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 internet. In this video, we're going to be talking about the factory pattern. Uh, why you would use it, what it's good for. Absolutely, no, no, never mind. Uh, right, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I have created some uh, basic model classes. I also, that is the wrong thing. I also have the uh, Lombok dependency because I can't be bothered creating constructors because that's too much time. Um, so what we've got here, we've got this interface, uh, which is a resource, and this has a method, calculate billable hours, and we have some objects. These objects have some dependencies, so we have an re employee and we have a contractor, they're both resources. They both have this calculate billable hours one. For the purpose of this, this employee is always going to return 12 for the billable hours, and the contractor is always going to return 10. Um, so the employee has some uh, dependencies, in this case a salary calculator, a holiday calculator, a working hours tracker, and the contractor in includes things like the day rate calculator and the working hours tracker, and like I say, it's always going to return 10. So the problem we have is that if we come over to the main class and say we're going to do some business logic, we decide we need to do something um, with the business logic, right? So we need to be doing things like, okay, so... We have a company source, and let's, this could be, you know, anywhere. This could be coming from anywhere. It's not necessarily static as I'm creating it now, because that would be daft. Um, and if I do something like this, if I say if uh, it's internal, uh, equals ignore case, company source, then what we want to do is we want to do something like, um, we'll create a resource here. We'll say final resource import that do resource and then we'll do resource uh, nope resource equals new employee and then in this case we've got to give it all of the dependencies which is a problem so this is a class that doesn't necessarily know about any of these dependencies obviously they're just objects for the purposes of this tutorial um, but in this case we've got to do this and isn't this a nightmare so we've got to do that, and then if that's not the case, then we've got to do this bit down here, which will be new contractor, which will be new object, new object. And again, these are their dependencies. And then down here, we're going to do our actual business logic that we wanted to do in this case, which is just going to be printing out uh, the billable hours. So we'll do something like... Um, billable hours and then it'll be resource it'll be resource calculate billable hours like that there we go so now what's going to happen um, is that when we run this obviously this is static so it's going to return a new ob uh, employee object so it's going to print the billable hours of 12, okay? There you go, B prints the billable hours of 12. Now, of course, the problem here is that, well, we've got these dependencies for one. We we don't need to know about them. They're not being used in the business logic section here. We don't necessarily care about them. We also got this decision that's being made here that we don't necessarily need to be made here. Um, also, what do we do... Um, why why is this code here this this code really shouldn't be here because now we've got like these two things that are happening in this this class we've got and assume this isn't the main class assume this is some other class what we've actually got happening is we've got some decisions being made about what object we need and then we've also got business logic happening here so really we want to be using the single responsibility principle and having classes that do those things it makes the code simpler makes it easier to understand and it makes it more maintainable so let's do that and the way we can do that is we can create a factory so if I create a new package we'll just call it factory in this case we'll call uh, we'll create a new class we'll call it resource factory and this is going to have one method that's going to return a resource uh, and it will be called create. It's not going to do it. It'll be called create resource, and it will take, let's say, a string. Okay. 
And then all we're going to do is we come back here and we're going to nick all of this. Like that. We'll get rid of this. Instead of having this bit here, we'll do... Oh, that didn't work. Thought I was being clever with Vim. Did not work. Okay, cool. So now I've got this factory. So we've moved uh, this gubbins, all of this nonsense, from here to a new class. So the way we can do this is we can do... Well, what we would actually do here is we would do something along the lines of final resource factory. Resource factory is equal to new resource factory. And this takes um, a type. Well, it doesn't take anything, actually. No argument constructor. To get the resource, we're going to say resource factory, create resource, and we'll pass in the type, which will be the company source. So now we've greatly cleaned up this code. Um, and the business logic is unaffected. The object instantiation has been created to the factory. And we've removed some of the dependencies of this class because now we don't even know about the specifics of the resource. It can be anything as far as this class is concerned. So if we run this again, this should do exactly the same thing. And this time it prints out 12 billable hours again because we're still maintaining that this is internal. We could do something like this and say test. And this will now print out 10 because the contractor's hours are 10. Uh, what have I done wrong there? Something's just gone wrong because it hasn't printed out the number I thought it was going to print out. And as usual, something has gone drastically wrong in one of my videos. Uh, why is this Why is this gone wrong? Uh, so if that's that... Ah, yes. I'm a moron. That's why. So I was having no effect. It was not super effective. Did not pass go. I didn't... Okay, here we go. Right. So now it's printing 10. Because, of course, we've changed this from... We've changed this to test. I can undo that back and it will go all the way back to printing 12. So now we've got this the decision that's being made about what's happening in the business logic, i.e. what the billable hours are, is being done by the factory because the factory is deciding what to create based on the inputs it's been given. So number of benefits. Well, single responsibility principle. This class has its responsibility to do its business logic -y stuff. The resource factory has its responsibility to be responsible for delegating uh, and creating objects. Uh, we also have the open close principle because in the case of wanting to uh, add new functionality, let's say we have another type that we wanted to add, all we need to do is we need to do something like this, say else if, and we could do, you know, type equals ignore case. And then in here, we do something like new, a new type entirely, right? So that new type that we've done uh, is totally fine. Oh, I need to do a return, don't I? It's going to moan because it doesn't implement the interface. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, so we, we've been able to actually add a whole new type to this and a new, a new function, new functionality to this program without affecting the actual logic that's going to use it. Um, the other benefit, of course, is that in the case of these objects, we have some complex construction going on, or not too complex in this example, but we have all these dependencies that these, these classes require. So in this case, this section here, this, this, this class, doesn't need to know about any of those dependencies anymore. In fact, it doesn't even need to know about the specific resource. It's dealing at a more abstract level. So we've moved all that to another place as well. And that's one of the that's sort of the main benefits of the the factory pattern there. So hopefully this has been useful. Au revoir for now. Tatar, bonjour, out of a